Most I saw back below and the governor's team in Nigeria have been simply fantastic. We thank all of you. At this point, I'll call on Lamte Bomosa Obayase Oriahi to get us rolling. Thank you, everybody, and good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my sister, Dr. Loretta Ogboroko. I want to uh, welcome all Edolites who are abroad to this uh, August event. Uh, just before we kick off, uh, please allow us a few minutes to you know, balance some uh, technical uh, things uh, right at the back room. We are still working on that. As soon as we get that done, I assure you that in a few minutes, we kick start the program. His Excellency is already right with us and by the grace of God, he's gonna be talking to us uh, shortly. Thank you very much. But in the meantime, I'd like you to enjoy this uh, beautiful piece, uh, the Edo National Anthem. Is calling over rise, sons and daughters of the land. The king of the city is marching. Stand up high to the pride of the land. The founding fathers have labored and our time to serve is now. The glory of the new Edo nation will forever be our pride. Beautiful Edo, glorious Edo, you're the heartbeat of Nigeria. Beautiful Edo, glorious Edo, stars are singing over you. You're the land people dream to be. Our treasures are found in all nations And our greatness is second to none Our history forever shall be written How our kings have endured all times Our people cultured in unity Our hearts beat for the land Rich culture stores nation a beautiful nation but i'm still going to appeal to you to bear with us uh we're still trying to sort out a few things at the back end uh but while we get through as soon as we get through by the grace of god we're just going to bring this excellency on and of course we crack on in the meantime uh dr loretta what do you think we have to expect from this uh evening's discourse um in this evening we we are privileged to have all of us in the house, all of us. By that, I mean every single lover of Edo State and every Edo State indigenous across the world. This is not 
just diaspora, this is across the world. And um, we have an engaging leadership. So it simply means that the followership is driving the leadership. And this evening, we are gonna have the opportunity to hear from leadership. And then we're gonna have the opportunity to interrogate. Interrogating leadership does not mean dissidence, no. It does not mean disobedience, no. It means getting to know exactly what is happening so each and every one of us can know how to key in. So Edo State people, Ed, lovers of Edo, friends of Edo, this is something novel. This is something not done before in Nigeria. And as the heartbeat of the nation, we are blazing a trail. That's a quite uh, reassuring, uh, blazing the trail. And of course, uh, the governor of Edo State, Governor Godunov Baseki, is setting uh, a good example for you know for everybody and of course uh, you know uh, a lot has been expected from this administration but uh, i want to ask um, in the course of uh, you know uh, the next four years uh, are you very optimistic uh, dr loretta well i think every edo son and daughter as you can testify from the over 1,500 people who have registered for this event, they have faith in this administration. They gave a mandate for a second tenure. And it is clear today from the caliber of people we have here, we have, don't forget we have in the house this evening, um, a man like Uncle Sonny Rabo, His Excellency Ambassador BQ Waifu. We have the common woman on the street in the market, everybody's engaging. So that tells us that we gave a mandate and we are prepared to protect that mandate. That's why we are here. And that in itself, Oriahi, is enough enthusiasm. That in itself is enough positive attribute. And that in itself is enough hope. That followership is driving leadership is what obtains everywhere else in the world. So I'm very optimistic, very, very optimistic. And so are we all. Thank you. Very well, very well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Loretta Oboroko. Um, I'm going to quickly take the button to uh, somebody uh, at the back, uh, you know, uh, room who is helping to do a lot of things. Um, Dr. <clears throat> Johnson Odebo, are we through? Yes. Come again. Can you yes. come with the question, your question again? The back end uh, arrangement. Yes, we are. We are. We are. I mean, we are all set, waiting for the governor to arrive, and then yes, we we'll set the ball rolling. We're okay. already here. Okay. Can we can we uh, please uh, locate the governor now and uh, see if uh, he's already in the room, so we can, uh, of course, unmute him and let's you know confirm that and get the program started. You know, while at, while we are waiting to locate His Excellency, um, Isoke Ibia in Canada can just tell us what she thinks the buzz is like for this event before we go on to uh, maybe Moses or Bacolo. Isoke Ibia, please. What's the buzz like in Canada for this event? Because you are telling me earlier on. Perhaps she's very busy with some technical issues as well. Check, check with That's Moses Obakpolo if he's in the room. Mo Moses Obakpolo, what's the buzz like for this event? Because from your voiceover, it was clear that you were covering the whole of Edo State from Kukuruku Hills to Ohuahe. So tell us, please. Tell us, sir. You have to unmute yourself. Yes, I'm doing that. Yes. Hello, can you hear me now? Loud and clear. I hear you. All right, I am very optimistic too. And uh, I'm sure we have an uphill task, but I know that we are going to be equal to the task. Uh, the S, former essay on media rather Kuso Saige has been of immense support. He has done uh, publicity on all the social media handles, as well as all the Edo conscious groups that exist in Benin and Nigeria. So today, I'm sure we're going to have full participation. 
from across the spectrums of the Edo society at home and the diaspora. Just like uh, these uh, events unfolding today, it's Ikwagba uh, Zio. We are going to reason together and chart a new course for Edo State for what I'll call a renaissance, which the governor has uh, already started. So we're expecting the best today. Very well, very well. Thank you very much. Uh, meanwhile, um, I, 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 I want to uh, personally, I mean, it, it is with all, uh, you know, uh, it is honor that uh, I want to especially, especially appreciate uh, uh, Uncle Sonny Irabo, who is in the house with us. Uh, Uncle Sonny is, a, I, I mean, for the Edu people, he's a legend. You know, he's a guru, a media guru of no mere repute. And uh, I want to bring Uncle Sonny Rabo on. Uncle Sonny Rabo, um, from your end, how do you see, you know, this program going? And of course, how do you see the administration going forward? Do we have Uncle Sonny Rabo in the house, please? Okay, if we can have him at this time, uh, can, can we, we have unmute? Okay, let me just help. Can you unmute yourself? I've tried to unmute you. Okay, is there? Finally, you yes. muted me. That was what happened. Yes. So, good evening, everybody. And uh, I'm very happy. Well, um, Lamte, your question is quite um, self explanatory. The whole world is expecting so much from this government. And today, the whole world is also expecting to listen to His Excellency, the governor. From the little that I um, shared, I was just getting questions and also getting all kinds of you know, comments like, um, so how long will this last? Is it going to be over two or three or four or five hours? I said, no, everything has a set program, which is two hours or three hours as the case may be, but His Excellency is the one that will now tell us how much time he can give us. But the most important thing is that I'm so happy I'm seeing the number of people already registered and the number of people who are already in the house is growing from 100 now to 218. And I'm not surprised because the buzz that we got is, show, is reflecting from what we are registering right now. So I want to expect and I want to say that I'm happy to be part of this and I expect the best from it. And good kudos to all of you who have put it together. Good. As a, as a media guru, um, one who is uh, who is presently a mentor to so many, um, how would you assess so far the performance of His Excellency the Governor of Edo State, particularly, you know, in, in, in that world, as far as Edo State is concerned? <laughs> yes. You know, when there's, there used to be an advert, you say you cannot kill the beetle. I don't know if I mean, how many of you saw that by Albert many years ago. Now, this is a man who came with a laudable plan and everybody saw that he meant well, but he had opposition. And how he passed through the opposition is today one of the best things that have happened to Nigeria. Why am I saying this? Once we had a best governor in the person of Dr. Samuel or Brigadier General Samuel Ogbemudia. And he had nine years to, to do his job under um, President or Head of State General Gowon. The only other person that is showing that sign of commitment and result is today's Godwin Nogegase Obasi. And it's not about just praising anybody. For the fact that you can see the sincerity of purpose, you can see that he has set some things in motion. And when it's working, for the first time, you saw a whole latitude of a number of people, all the adults said, listen, we want this man to continue. And so <laughs> they backed him up. So here he is again, against all odds, he's back for the second term. So I expect that he's gonna give us, he will finish the journey and he will make better what he started first. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Uncle Sonny Erabo. Uh, yes, Edo people across the world, please, I've just uh, been informed that uh, in a matter of uh, 
minutes uh, that His Excellency is going to be live with us. Uh, in the meantime, I want to bring on uh, uh, my brother, Moses Obakbolo. Uh, Moses Obakbolo is uh, a very established uh, actor of the adult descent and uh, a movie maker. Uh, from your world, uh, Mr. Moses Obakbolo, how would you assess the governor of Edo State so far? Moza, uh, yes, uh, yes, you have called somebody. Uh, if I have to say anything, I, I must say what John Peter said. If you make a better mouse trap, the world will beat a path to your doorstep. And you cannot uh, light a lamp and put it under a bushel, it must certainly shine. That's what uh, Baseki is. And the Bible injunction says, when the righteous reign, the people rejoice. You can walk now kilometers outside Benin and see development springing up every day. And all these are done without any fun fair. No cakes, no candles. Development belongs to the people. And so when they are complete, the people just use them. It's not about uh, saying, Things like what the business we call Allah Lunwabe, Amuru Baki Yutogo. What is is what? And that's what Aristotle said is knowledge is knowledge qua knowledge. So development is development qua development. And I think for this second tenure, uh, we are in for another bumper harvest of development because there is a belief proverb saying, I'm a year kidbava mami there. So this time around, I think we are going to buy more things. So for this next four years, it's consolidation and advancement. So that's what Edo people should expect. You know, I like that. I yeki bava amamiri there. In the light of that, I, I I want to call on my sister, Dr. Loretta Ubooko. How much do we expect to buy in the next four years from your assessment? Um, I told people, Lante, there are no impossibilities. We will buy what we want to buy. We will buy as much as we choose to buy. We are the only ones who can limit ourselves. They say the word impossible simply means I am possible. We are possible. Together, we are stronger. And I have no doubt about that. We are still waiting on Isoke to tell us what the buzz was like in Canada. Is she available now? And I hope that answers your question. The force of followership is cannot be underestimated. And I do is blazing the trail. I'm so proud. My other people call me, they say, ah, that's when I do state now, wow. I say, well, we didn't do it alone. We did it together. You know, and together we will stand and buy whatever we choose to buy, get to wherever we choose to go. Thank you. So, okay, are you there now? Yes, I am. And just meet one device, sorry. Okay, can everyone hear me clear? Clear, loud yes. and clear. If you can, if you can hear me clear, just let me know. Well, I can hear you loud and clear. It's really clear. Okay. Um, it's been a lot of buzz here um, in Canada, and, and not just Canada alone, from the US and um, even from Nigeria. I've had a lot of friends calling and asking, oh my God, so is the governor really going to be coming? Um, answering questions from people, speaking to the people and letting the people know exactly what he's doing. Um, it, I, I'm not just um, shutting the people out because the people voted him out and um, you know, what he's doing is amazing, just knowing that he's also coming back to the people to talk to the people and, uh, and not just shutting them out, out of uh, what's happening in the government house. Hmm. That's splendid. I, I understand that His Excellency Ambassador Matthew Biki Uwaifu is in the house. Your Excellency Ambassador, what is your take looking at the next four years? How, how do you think you want to see a door in the next four years? Well, uh, in the first four years, uh, structures were made despite all the 
rigmaroling and all the problems to distract attention. I should expect that this second term, more consolidations will be made. And just like uh, the last two speakers said, I expect more development. And I expect that in this second term, the governor will lay a legacy that he can leave behind for people to remember him by during this second term. And moreover, I used to say that we are marching to El Dorado. It's no longer we left Egypt to Kenya. Now we are marching to our El Dorado. And El Dorado is a place of paradise. Edo State has set the pace and definitely we will arrive there with all of us speaking with one voice and continuing to support our governor to achieve his mega agenda. We all have a role to play. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Your words actually remind me of the Edo dream. Uh, presently, a number of people, I, I, I see a number of persons talking of talking about the Edo dream, you know, wanting to realize the Edo dream. Uh, but if we look at what the Edo dream would be like, uh, Dr. Justin Odebo, what, what, what in your mind, how would you picture what the Edo dream would be like at the end of uh, the next four years? Yes, uh, simple. Uh, the Edo dream, in my view, would be an Edo state where you have youths gainfully employed, uh, small businesses springing up because infrastructure, uh, you have actually the vehicles being developed or uh, the uh, platforms being made available to, for businesses to develop. And we want to see a do where schools uh, would even improve. I mean, further improvement on their do best, uh, which is going to trickle and actually turn out graduates who really know what they're doing. And this is what I really see. And as you see, um, you see, the youths are actually the bedrock of any country go to where the youths are actually better developed those countries really do well. And that's if you go to China, if you go to many other countries, advanced countries of this world, it's actually the youth. You grab the youth, bring them up, groom them, technical education or on the university side. I mean, you see them really coming up to develop things which would have been imported. You see money rolling because the more money in circulation when these small businesses spring up because of the infrastructure that the government is government's really trying to put in place, uh, it, it, it's just going to be bright. I see a bright future for Edo people, and I'm so happy to be part of it, to witness this. I'm really so glad. And I hope every one of you sees what I what, see exactly what I say. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Justin Odebo. Of course, you'll make me feel like, you know, it is. this is the best time, you know, to be an Edo man, to be very honest. And, uh, and that's what it is. Um, but... Looking at the future, because I'm very enthusiastic, uh, you know, about tomorrow, and uh, particularly looking at what the governor of Edo State has actually done so far, some of the structures in place, and of course the effort he's putting into, you know, the future, the tomorrow of Edo State, and uh, that is why some people, including myself, actually can talk about the Edo dream, and uh, in the light of that, uh, uh, that is something that is very structural. You know, the Bible says. For those who are Christians, it says, seek you first the kingdom and every other thing shall be added unto you. And uh, that, is, that is something that this government has, uh, you know, actually started, which is like the kingdom of development as far as development is concerned. And uh, I, I'm making a very direct reference to, you know, the, the completion of the first phase of Usiomo power plant, which already is supplying, uh, you know, parts of a do state, you know, with, uh, you know, 247, uh, you know, uh, electric supply. Um, I, I want to ask uh, Uncle uh, Sonny Rabo, uh, looking at the Sioma power plant and uh, the future we expect, what would you say? At least being an Edo man today in this generation. Uncle Sonny Rabo. Is this in the room? If it's not there, can Moses or Bakbolo take on that, uh, you know, that question? I mean, what, what, what would your perception be? What is, what, what would you, how would you assess the situation looking forward? I think um, sorry, is on, 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 but they okay. keep muting me. Okay. Like ahead, them. Uncle Rabo, go ahead. Yeah, please. But let me quickly say, once you release, they should unmute so that I'll be able to talk because I tried to put myself on twice now. 
All right, so the question was very clear. And uh, I want to say, being a proud Edo man doesn't mean that we should just let everything right. The power, the system of power, uh, 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 power uh, plant, as it were, is something that is not only laudable, it's something he has set out to do and something he's going to do. And what do we expect? As pace setters of Nigeria, let me repeat that. Edo's are pace setters of Nigeria. And I'm not saying it flippantly. I'm saying it because every Edo person that has played a role in the Nigerian nation has played a creditable role. And the names are just there for you to mention. I mentioned earlier that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Brigadier General uh, Bermudia was one solid leader. Now, if Obasaki said he was going to do something and people are trying to stop him, it's because they are afraid of his success. Luckily for us, he's putting his money where his mouth is. And that is where we should, that's why we must all sit, sit behind him and then support him and carry him to the next level of success because this second term is going to be a powerful one and it's all of us that will make it successful. So that power plant, I pray it comes to pass successfully and we will now show how to power the entire nation. That's what I think. Thank you very much, uh, Uncle Sonny Irabo. Um, I'm, I'm glad, you know, the, the, the first phase of the power plant has come alive, it's already working, and of course it's supplying electricity to government facilities, including the Ogbe Stadium. Uh, of course, when it's completed, it's going to power most part of Edo State, you know, and that's uh, good news because when there's power, you know, uh, constant power supply, it means that uh, a lot of other things will thrive almost independently. Uh, but in the light of that, uh, we've been talking about, uh, you know, uh, what the government or the governor of Edo State has been doing, and of course, the things we expect. But for us as uh, indigenous and, uh, you know, of Edo State, uh, there, there would be some expectations, you know, as it were, you know, to ensure that uh, we join the government of a do state to, you know, move a do state to that level. That's a Dorado, like somebody talked about. And of course, the Edo dream that, you know, a lot of other people are talking Can about. I, I, I want to ask Moses or Bakbolo, um, from your own point of view, what do you think is expected of us, a do people, particularly going to the next four years? Uh, what I will just uh, contribute now is from an age-long saying in Edo, Amy Mara Diewo, Ari Yerun, swear. I'm sure all Edo people will understand that. Alele, Obokpa Mwiran, Orake Anri, Oke Anri, Onaya Mwiran. So it's the effort of everybody. If, if, you, if you saw the jingle, you see, to take Edo to the next level, to make Edo great again, is a task of everybody. It begins with you. If one man can conceptualize a dream that will bring back the old glory of Benin, everybody must key in. It's a responsibility that we all owe this nation. The point is, the other nations that are developed, they sacrificed. And today they are enjoying the fruit of their labor. They are enjoying the fruit of their endeavor. They are enjoying the sweat, the blood that people sacrificed. But this time we are not sacrificing blood. We are sacrificing our support, our initiative and everything that will contribute to the Edo uh, dream. So what, I'm, uh, uh, what, what I will explain further is that if America was built by Americans, Edo will be built by Edo. If Britain was built by Britain, Britons, then Edo should be built by Edo. Edo wala lunuwa If you don't lick your lips during the Hamata, it will get cracked and you will suffer. We suffer now, so we don't suffer anymore. All the laudable, laudable projects of uh, Governor Baseki is get towards a success tomorrow. Judge, uh, Judge Orwell wrote Animal Farm and said, we must all fight for this revolution, though we may die before it breaks. 
So if we lay the foundation and it is successful, then we'll look from wherever we are in the great beyond and our children will give us libation and say, yes, you did well. That's what Governor Basek is planting. Starting with the uh, suburb, the basic education, he has succeeded in making Edo a model that even a mega city like Lagos, even a mega city like Lagos can you know, borrow a leaf from Edo. Look at industrialization. Edo is uh, about uh, one of the few states that have uh, industrial uh, 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 revolution in, 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 in the establishment of uh, this um, production center. When he saw that the former uh, center uh, for printing was moribund, he turned it into something. And I tell you, our youth have benefited immensely from that. There are other things I can go on and on and on to say, but the, the point is that it is our responsibility to build a door to the state we want it to be. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, my brother. God bless you. Please, I want to appeal to you know Edo people and friends of Edo who are with us right uh, in the Zoom room right now. And of course, uh, the hundreds or probably thousands of people who are already, you know, have already joined us on the social media, Facebook and the YouTube and everywhere. I want to appeal to you uh, that from the information we are getting, um, the Edo State uh, uh, Governor is... Uh, is, I mean, they are still trying to fix his, uh, some of his equipment because it's actually uh, on a journey down to a do state and he's stopped by somewhere so that he can join this meeting and they're trying to put, uh, you know, the, the equipment together. And uh, I have been told that uh, in the next couple of minutes, they are going to be done with that. Uh, but going forward, I want to quickly bring on uh, His Excellency Ambassador Matthew Biki Uwaifo. And I want to ask, uh, Your Excellency, sir, um, looking at the Edo of tomorrow, or at the Edo of now and tomorrow, and uh, like I said, I established earlier that we've been talking about the governor and what he's been doing, what he's doing, and what, what he's hoping to do for Edo, State, what we're expecting. What exactly should be expected of us, Edo people, home and abroad? Move my back. Well, first of all, I have to start with uh, people living at home because I must say a big thank you to those who are holding the fort at home, because without their being at home, none of us will have the Gyogbe. The Gyogbe, that is the family house. None of us will be able to return back to it. So kudos to all those at home, bearing the brunt of the, the uh, vicissitudes of life. Uh, concerning the diaspora, I think it is time to walk the talk. You know, uh, and I've always been preaching. It is time to invest back home to help the government to create jobs. If you check everywhere, all around the world, even America, it is the private sector that makes the economy tick, that makes the economy great. The government, the highest the government can employ is maybe if it is too high, the job they can create in a four year period is maybe uh, uh, not more than 200,000. And that would be a lot of achievement. But with private partnership, with Edo State having the highest number of people in the diaspora, let's just assume that according to figures, there are over 3 million diasporans Edo's. Let's just assume that only 400,000 come back home to invest and create only four, four jobs. You see, four, four jobs. Those 400,000, if they create four, four jobs, that will be 1.6 million jobs. And right now, the jobs that we need in Edo State is not up to half a million. So Edo State will become the hub. Other states will be coming to look for work. And uh, if you check in our past history, that's what happened. Edo is that is, Edo is the center of the universe. And this is what I believe should take place. So what I'm saying is this, the people at home too should know and be aware that opportunity comes once in a lifetime. 
somebody like me and other people, my age group, we are not fighting now for ourselves. We are fighting for the future, for the youth to have a future, for a legacy to be left for the youth to work on. And uh, just as it is said in the Bible, uh, the apostles uh, laid the foundation. Paul came and built on it. And people like Timothy, they harvested what was built. So I think we all should join in the and forget about harvesting like Timothy when God has made you to lay a foundation. So I think by the grace of God that with all of us joining hands together in teamwork and in unity, we'll be able to join the governor in taking a do to the next level. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Please, I, I want to appeal still uh, for just uh, uh, a few more moments. And uh, of course, uh, His Excellency is going to be with us. I see, I see a number of hands raised. Um, yes, in the course of this uh, interactive uh, section with the Governor of Edo State, uh, the time is going to come where we are going to randomly select people from the Zoom floor with their Zoom hands raised, of course, to ask Governor questions. And of course, in the course of the program as well, we are going to be filling questions too that we shall meet from the back room and people are already working on that. And they're taking questions from, uh, you know, uh, from the, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, the, the inbox, you know. And uh, of course, there are others who have equally taking questions that, uh, questions that have come from uh, emails and uh, WhatsApps and all of that. It's an interactive section. Uh, it is, uh, it is tagged, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, <clears throat> a town hall meeting. And uh, if you ask me, I'll tell you, the truth is that probably in the history of Nigeria, this governor is one of the most engaging governors I have actually ever known, you know. He, he finds time to engage with his people to, of course, ensure that the, you know, the dialogue is alive and everybody's participating. And so we are happy, we are glad. And uh, this is sure to continue. Like, like he promised, he's actually living you know, through, you know, to, to, to what he has promised. And uh, this is one of such examples. And of course, in a few months after today, we're going to be having another session with him and all of that. It's going to be a continuous process like, process like that where the governor will be engaging with the people of Edo State. And uh, I feel very privileged, and I'm sure most of us do, to be part of this process at this time, you know, in history. Uh, in the meantime, please, for those who may not have uh, enjoyed, you know, the Edo Anthem with us, what we played earlier, I want to replay the Edo, Edo anthem and hope that when we come back, we'll be ready to start the just, meeting. Just before you... Go ahead, ma'am. I was just saying, just before you play the Edo anthem, the governor has said he will join us soon. And Odion has said in the chat that what is happening to Gelegele -Gele Port. I will enjoy your Odion and many other people in the chat today that there is someone here who can answer some of your questions and is already in the house, even aside from His Excellency. And for those who have commented that people speaking Benin should speak other languages or say the meaning of what they've said in Benin, that is very true. That is a valid observation. And uh, to reassure all of you, Edo State is recognized in all its ethnic divisions here today. And um, even in the panelists, we, we, we are balanced. Um, and obviously, the correction is taken on board. Anybody who speaks Benin will very kindly put an English interpretation. But thank you. The Excellency will be with us soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Loretta so Boroku. Let, let's one. just enjoy this anthem and then we come back to the Gile Gile uh, question. The ancient city is calling Oh, arise, sons and daughters of the land The king of the city is marching Stand up high to the pride of the land The founding fathers have labored And our time to serve is now the glory of the new Edo nation will forever be our pride. Beautiful Edo, glorious Edo, you're the heartbeat of Nigeria. 
that for people who have started putting their questions in the chat, they should all please be patient. And the Gele Gele question seems to be a recurring theme. Fortunately for us, we have not just the governor in the house to talk about this today, but we have one of those who are key in this project, who are working on it, and they are already in the house. They will be speaking as well on this subject matter. The governor, as I hear, is already ready to come in. So, Dr. John Sinodibo, can you please search out His Excellency? Uh, not yet. Uh, just a second. Yeah, it's not yet. Yes, while uh, Dr. Uh, John Sinodibo is uh, dealing with that, uh, please, for those who have joined us on Facebook and on YouTube, majorly Facebook, particularly. I enjoy you to share the broadcast. I think the whole essence is for us to reach as uh, many people as possible. Please share so that other people can uh, equally share from your you know, uh, platforms as it were. Uh, we are live on Facebook, we're probably live on uh, YouTube. Uh, of course, please share. Yes, Dr. Johnson, do we have updates on uh, His Excellency so we can formally start the program? Not yet, I can't see him. Yet in the waiting room. Can we find uh, Dr. Loretta? Can we find uh, the name of his device so yes. we can uh, quickly sort him out? I will update you with that information in a moment. I will update the back room staff now. Okay, I appreciate that. Loretta, do you see? Yes. Okay, um, while uh, we are working on that to uh, formally start the program, I, well, I don't know who uh, Loretta was actually making reference to as one who could take, uh, you know, uh, some go at uh, the Gele Gele question. Uh, Loretta, who may that be? Before his excellency comes on. So, uh, 
the person is no other person than um, um, Mr. Greg Ogbaifu. Um, he he is one of the arrow heads of those who is trying to get this project actualized, and he has confirmed to me that he is in the house. Um, I don't know if he's ready to speak yet before the governor speaks, uh, or if he's just going to say a hello to the people. I could unmute him. So he says a hello and they are reassured that he's here. Okay, I think that will be fair enough. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Greg Ogbefum, just say hello to the people. And of course, we hope to hear from you uh, as soon as we officially start the program. So I'm asking him to unmute. Okay, ma'am. And uh, Dr. Loretta, if your video can come on, it will be helpful. I think uh, the governor is in the house. To so many others. Go ahead, uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Dibo. Go ahead. What do we have? Uh, the governor is in the house. Is that in the house? Just wanted to announce that. Yes. We can confirm. Okay. Uh, yes. Before we bring on His Excellency, let's just uh, well, like the government uh, set government setting is. Let us start with the national anthem, please. And let us thank um, Greg Ogbeku. He will speak later. Very well. Thank you. to you and do people across the world. It is with esteem, honor, and privilege that I welcome you to this interactive section with His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, Governor Godwin Obaseke. This meeting is tagged Edo State Town Hall meeting with His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State. Hence, it is an engagement with all Edo's, both home and abroad. In the course of this meeting, we expect His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, to share with us some of the things he's been doing, the things that he is currently doing, and of course, what we are to expect from him in the next four years. Hopefully, we may be hearing from him too, what he expects from us and do people across the world. In forefront, we shall be taking random questions from participants, particularly from those who are with us on this Zoom platform. We shall equally entertain questions and comments from the Zoom chat room. Also, questions will be entertained from a dollars that are sent in their questions through emails and WhatsApps. Notably, this meeting is a Zoom meeting, but you may join us live on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, if you are joining us, I enjoy you to share so we can get you know, to as many people as possible. My name is Comrade Lamte Ikmawusa Oriahi. And with me to anchor this program are three highly distinguished Edo sons and daughters who have paid their dues in their individual sphere of duty. Permit me to introduce to you a lady of substance, an epitome of internal and external beauty, and one whose life is a huge example of service to humanity. Unapologetically, she is her father's daughter, Dr. Loretta Uduare Uboroko. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lante Oriahi. Welcome to all Edo people at home and abroad. I want to thank all of you and welcome to His Excellency. But most fascinating is the engagement of Edo people, the engagement of followership with leadership. I thank us all. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Loretta Alboroko. Uh, please, going forward, Dr. Loretta, I will uh, enjoy you to please, uh, you know, put on your video. We will appreciate that. Uh, equally, uh, we equally have with us uh, an icon, a red gem, a media guru, one whose service to Nigeria, as far as the media space is concerned, will remain indelible for life. Today, he mentors so many, so many, so many. That is, you know, keeping the dream alive to ensure that the future, you know, of our media space is a guaranteed future with bliss. Please, it is my honor to introduce to you Uncle Sonny Irabo. Can we unmute him, please? Do we have Sonny Irabo in the house still? In the house. Uh, uh, miss, yeah. You, you just have to mute or mute once. Okay, I will. Uh, I will just go to. Is he, is he ready? He, he should be ready. She just unmute once, just one. I click. am. Go ahead. I'm ready. Uh, Uncle Sonny Rabo, please just keep it open. Don't mute anymore. So we don't it's have this me. issue going for, forward. Thank go you ahead, very sir. much. But let me stress one point. I am not the one touching the mute. So let your people do it there from there. Thank you. All right, so we'll look okay. to that. I'm very honored to be part of this process. And I'd like to say that being an Edo man gives me a thing of joy because it has always been one case of very few people determining the strength of how the heart beats for Nigeria. Your Excellency, we thank you. We expect a lot from you because you've done so much for us. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Uncle Sonny Rabo. Equally, we equally have, and uh, we are privileged to co-host this program with uh, <clears throat> an adult son of culture, I call him, uh, one who epitomizes the very beauty of our adultness. He himself is a media personality uh, who is baptized into the acting profession as uh, you know, an actor and a movie maker. And of course, he has distinguished himself very well as uh, an Edo civil servant. Please, it is with pleasure that I introduce to you my brother, my friend, uh, Mr. Mozart. Mozart, please. Domo, Your Excellency. It's a very rare privilege to be one of the anchors of today's event. And uh, we are people who believe in your dream. And of course, that dream, the adult dream, is going to come to the fullest fruition by your regime. And together with everyone in Edo State at home and in diaspora, we are sure you are going to have a successful second term. Welcome, Your Excellency. Obu here, Domo, sir. Thank you very much. That's from uh, Moza is on back. Well, on that note, I quickly want to bring on uh, Dr. Loretta Oboroko to lay the ground rule for this, for this program. Dr. Loretta, please. So once again, I thank everyone for being here. Um, as with all productive and seamless events, there are certain rules each of us needs to engage selflessly with so that we can get the best of this evening. The first one is, if you are not speaking, please kindly mute yourself. If you are doing anything that would be distractive, then kindly turn off your video camera as well. Persons who wish to ask questions, you do need to put up your Zoom hand. The reason we are doing all of these is so that we can get round to everybody quickly. Questions will only span 90 seconds. Please, I repeat, 90 seconds. And you are only allowed to ask one question. We don't need a pregnant question. We don't need a question that has babies, two children or four children. Just one question, please. And that way, His Excellency can quickly go through them. We intend to take the questions in batches of two. So call two people, His Excellency answered. And if you can't get to the questions, please do the chats. We will be reading out as much chats as we can. However, let's all be realistic. It is not possible in this kind of event to call everyone. And I saw someone put in the chat that, 
oh, they already have the people they want to call. That is not true. In fairness to his excellency, he said he wants this to be spontaneous and engaging. He's not interested in having questions beforehand. So rest assured that if we can get to you, we will get to you. Thank you very much, but please obey the ground rules. Obey the ground rules. Thank you. Yes, obey the ground rules. Thank you very much, Dr. Loretta Oboko. On that note, I quickly want to bring on uh, Mr. Sonny Irabot, of course, to usher in His Excellency the Governor. Your Excellency, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, sir, I'm clear. Your Excellency, I'm proud to welcome you once again. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor, my humble, to let you know that we're here to listen to a great Nigerian and a dull son and somebody that you have all seen perform over the last four years. And indeed, let's not forget that eight years he was also chairman of the, of the economic account. So he's well grounded, he's prepared, and he has done the best four years. Now he's about to commence the second year. So what does he have for us? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, Godwin Nogagase Obasteki, to the forum. Your Excellency, sir. Thank you very, very much, Sonny. Thank you, Lanty. And thank you, all the hosts. Let me apologize that we are starting this um, town hall meeting rather than are behind schedule. Um, I've been on the road for the last four hours just trying to get to Benin from Wari. It's all, it was almost impossible. The traffic has just been. So you please do appreciate. I just didn't want to uh, keep you waiting. I was listening in on the, you know, um, while I was on my way in the car, I was listening into the chats, the conversations you were having. So I was actually part of the, you know, as part of the town hall when it started, but I just didn't have the video, the, the lights in the car to get the video across to you. That's why the delay. But um, we have one hour, I think, I mean, uh, minimum, I mean, we could extend it. And I'll just, over the next 30 minutes, try and um, tell you what I have done uh, since November 12th, when I was inaugurated. But I mustn't fail to thank you again, all of you, at those across the world, at those in the diaspora, at those you know, at home, for the turnout, for the prayers, for the goodwill, and for the support, which I continue to enjoy from practically all of you. Um, since we got inaugurated, we've hit the ground running and running real fast. I'll just quickly go through um, some of the um, areas we've covered. Um, I mean, not, they may not be exhaustive, but I believe in the uh, question and answer session, we will, you will raise some of them I haven't uh, covered. Um, you recall from my inauguration speech, I did say we're gonna focus on you know, key, some key areas. First, we were going to fix the engine that drives Edo State. And the engine that drives Edo State, like every other government, is the bureaucracy, the public service. If the public service don't work, then all the policies, all the promises cannot be kept and will not happen. And so we've spent several weeks just working with the public service. We've, uh, before we had a transformation project at hand, and some work had started. And what we've done since the 12th of um, November is accelerate the work. We've, uh, we've put in place a transition team, um, a, a team of, made up of experienced politicians, former civil servants, uh, prof university professors, um, activists, about a dozen of them, uh, two dozen of them, about 24 of them, to act and serve as part of the transition team. You recall I did ask for 
a grace period. I said, look, I will not be able to make any political appointments until after February because I needed a minimum of 90 days to work through the civil service and the public service to put in place systems, processes, procedures on which government will run. And I'm happy we've done so because um, over the last uh, several weeks, I've brought all the permanent secretaries and all the staff and all their staff together. I've you know, commenced an exercise. We've finished what we call a head count. Every head of a department agency or ministry has submitted the number of staff they have and what they do, and they've signed off on them. And you know, for me, it was quite revealing that in my office, the governor's office, for instance, there were 135 casual workers. Many of them I've never seen. I mean, I haven't seen in the last four years. Um, I found out, for instance, we had 66 vehicles in the governor's office with 28 drivers. So, I mean, it's been revealing and you can imagine the extent of the you know, spread of uh, what's going on in government. And it's, it's not surprising because um, over the years, I mean, several decades, over the last several decades, people just have just acted in pockets and government have you know, you know, not been able to act in unison uh, and with a central control system. We have also you know, gotten them beyond just understanding and revealing where we are today to put in place what we call a scorecard, uh, to get them to begin to uh, you know, think, like asking themselves the question, what is our purpose? Why are we here? In this ministry, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to achieve? How am I organized? What should be my key performance indicators? Just like you do in the private sector, we're introducing that. And you know, it's been quite interesting because uh, that, well, you know, the, the initially there was resistance, initially there was apathy, but I did reassure them that this was not an exercise to um, throw anybody out of work, but an, an exercise to get people to just deliver value because we're already paying them and the least we expect is that they deliver value. So that's working, um, and we are very pleased with the progress we've made. Some of them are very, very intelligent people, and so I'm not surprised as to how quickly they are picking up. We have also, you know, in the process, even before now, understood the vacancies that, in the, that exist in the civil service. For instance, I mean, if, like I said, you have people who have been working as casual workers in the last, over the last uh, eight years. If they have work to do in government and they are doing the work, why, why continue to make them casuals? Why not you know, employ them properly? And we will do we, 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 well, quite a lot of vacancies, but we declared about 1,400 of them. And the emphasis were to, was to, to employ or fill those vacancies that require, that are mostly technical, engineers, um, and engineers, um, technical people, technology people, you know, um, and, and you know, people in the medical uh, area, you know, all, you know, uh, I mean, for instance, in the, the Ministry of Environment, we then had well, any environmental engineer um, in, in a ministry that's so important and significant as such. So those vacancies have been declared. They are all over the internet um, and, you know, we put them in the papers and we hope to commence actual recruitment first, uh, very early in the new year. We've also been working with the consultants to move the whole operations of government into an e-platform. And we expect that we'll launch what we call e-government, you know, electronic government or a do electronic government uh, before the end of the first quarter next year. Work has advanced. Um, we are piloting with two agencies at this point in time. I, you know, just checking in this morning, I was quite uh, um, pleased with the amount of work that they have done. One area that we have tried, we worked on since we, we uh, got on in has been security. As you know, security has been a major, major issue, a major issue for us in Nigeria. Uh, following on the NSAS uh, demonstrations, the uh, security apparatus in Nigeria was put to test and was really, really stretched. Um, you are all witnesses to what happened. I mean, how the police stations were, were burned, how in Edo in particular, unlike any other state in Nigeria, 
gangs, they were arranged and went in and broke the two jails in Benin, and such that we have over 2,000 um, inmates, you know, you know in uh, the state and the country. But we haven't been, you know, uh, we, we, we haven't um, been despondent. <coughs> taking the issue of security um, in our hands and we have done quite a lot. I may not be able to reveal all we've done because of the nature of security, but I want to assure you that one fundamental change, one shift that has occurred is that we have on our own now stopped to think about security just as a national matter and to leave security only in the hands of federal security agencies. We are domesticating our security, but security is local. And I want to thank some of you who have advised, who sent notes, and that, you know, following your advice, follow, we have now begun to engage our people in securing our communities and the state. Um, you, if you, you know, understand clearly two items, of, well, maybe two major items that have never been part of the state's governance structure have been electricity and security, because these have been on the exclusive list forever, in the last four, five decades. The, look, the, the state governments have not developed the capacity to even organize and deal with the issue of security. They've, uh, and so, you know, somewhat electricity. And electricity is so bad because we, even after privatizing electricity, people still don't realize that it's not in private hands. They still uh, think it's under federal or state control because the states have no mechanisms to even control the supply and distribution of electricity. The same thing goes with security. Uh, so what we've done for the first time is to create a department for public safety in my office. So as a chief security officer of the state, I will now have the view, the overview of not only what the federal security agencies are doing, but what's going on security-wise in every community in my state, in a do state, whether you know, through the vigilantes or the community policing arrangement, which the federal government has put together with us. We, this office will coordinate the deployment of community, community policemen. By the way, I, I went to the personal parade of 860 of them about two weeks ago. I ordered that they be given an extended training this last week in intelligence gathering with the Department of State Security. That's just been, that's been done, it will be concluded next week because they are doing that in batches. Um, we've, you know, we've increased the amount of money we set aside monthly from our locations for security. Um, and so we have put in more resources into that. We, all the local governments have been working with the various vigilante groups in the various communities and talking to community leads and we're getting information and data to understand what is going on. Uh, we've also set up our command and control center. I mean, we had one uh, call center which we used for COVID. I've upgraded it into a command and control center such that citizens can now call in um, you know, for, 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 you know, inform us on any incidents or any crimes being committed, and we have we organized the response to 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 respond to those calls. Um, we are also doing work with these uh, federal security agencies in terms of locating uh, their presence in hotspots, um, and we're finalizing the you know documents to relaunch this uh, security trust fund. That is important because that is where. I believe the citizens of Edo can help us with security. This is a transparent structure where we contribute and we'll expect Edo citizens and institutions to contribute so that we can support all the efforts in security. Security is very, very expensive. You know, we are working to try and get various technologies. We're working to put cameras on the streets. We're working to give you know, uh, sustenance to our, uh, to our men on beat. You need to send them rations. We need to give them stipends to encourage them. All of that is very expensive and uh, we will be coming to you to all contribute to helping us make it do a secure place. But be rest assured, with the plans we have, we've put in place, um, you, will, you may not see it because we're not making noise about it, but I'm, I'm very confident that the results will begin to show one area we have worked very hard on uh, since um, November 12th is the healthcare area. I mean, you see COVID, COVID-2 is here again. 
I mean, the second wave is here and uh, we, I'm, I'm very concerned. I'm gonna be making statements in the next few days uh, because we are seeing infection rates increasing at an alarming rate. And, you know, it's getting really, really scary and we have to do something. We cannot afford to continue to be reckless, but that is not the issue for this evening. I will be making a broadcast in the next couple of days on that. But we have continued with the redesign of our healthcare system. And the basic thinking, like I told you during the electioneering, is that you've got to separate the issue of government as a regulator of the healthcare sector and government as a provider of healthcare services. The fact that government is a provider does not mean government should not be regulated. And if the same person, the same set of institutions are doing both, you will not have effectiveness. So that is part of the, you know, the, 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 the work we're doing in the transformation team. And um, it's going very, very well. Uh, we're talking to partners, uh, particularly in the private sector to see how they can work with us, um, how they can co-invest with us in the healthcare system. Uh, we have just concluded arrangements and our contract will be awarded for the expansion of the Benin Specialist Hospital. And work will start in January on the Estella Passenger Hospital. You know, we used it, for, fortunately, there may be a delay there because, you know, that's our isolation. We converted it into an isolation center. And with COVID-2, we may not be able to work as fast, but we will see what we can do because they are, we are building two you know, sets of, you know, uh, uh, blocks the existing one and uh, the, a new one. We may start with a new one um, until we're able to vacate the isolation center from the uh, old one. But that's work, uh, uh, working. What, what I'm pleased is that you, I don't know if I told you while during uh, the campaigning, that we found that about 30 or 40 years ago, the whole idea of a medical complex, a medical city, had been incubated in Edo. And work had actually started. So from Stella Bassanger, from the uh, Country Home Road to the Stella Bassanger Hospital Road, there's a 30 acre piece of land, you know, where, you know, the nursing school was built, a nursing hostel was being built and abandoned. There were pillars that had been put in, but I've gone back and I'm, you know, rebuilding you know, that whole medical uh, complex, starting with the, the special, uh, with the Stella Bassanger Hospital, the nursing school, the contractors have, have mobilized and they, you know, after the holidays, they'll commence construction. The uh, supporting infrastructure, like the, um, the nurses hostel that has been um, redesigned. It's a 288 bedroom hostel. And we're gonna rebuild and complete that before August, before the school opens. And we have a team, a project team that's working on accreditation process, both for the nursing school and the school of Midway Free. I'm very pleased with the project. I sit on top of those meetings. So it's not something that's delegated to anyone else. We've also done quite a bit of work on infrastructure as usual at this time of the year, we call the contractors, uh, all our co contractors and I get them to go and patch the areas that, are, that we have, um, that have been um, eroded as a result of the rainfall. That work is starting, unfortunately the rains I've just refused to go every, it's still raining in Benin. You know, it rained about uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I mean, rains in December tells you that climate change is real. But we are, they're working, they have their mandates once they, they, they get dry spells, they'll patch those roads. And we've commend, we continue to accelerate work on our major projects, the Kenwa Road, um, I think, um, uh, it's called Textile Mill Road. We've asked the contractors to go and start on 19th Street. Um, we have in the Doe North, I think there are two projects, the Era Road, I've told the contractor to go out and start. In Central, we have a standby contractor who we've told to continue working. So in the area for um, uh, you know, infrastructure, road infrastructure, we're pleased. We already know what to do. Um, it's not a problem. We, we, um, we, we, we're going to be funding our, you know, uh, C4 plus that intervenes in roads within the city. Uh, <clears throat> we've called the contractors to put them ready and they should be, uh, they should start work very early in the new year. Um, work uh, has, we, we switched on the Osioma power plant, the 55 megawatts ready, good to go. Uh, we, we, the substation and pump house has been switched on. So 
the box C and D in the Secretariat in the Palm House complex, uh, sorry, in the Secretariat complex, the high, new High Court have been connected and connection um, is ongoing before the end of the year. Most of the um, government buildings will have been connected. The contractors who are going to be doing the street lights, uh, you know, the contracts have been finalized and they should commence the process of rewiring the street lights in the areas where we have existing ones and putting new poles in the, in the areas with new ones. Uh, we have, like I told you, we've, we have a contract of, for, to build 40 kilometers of street lights around Benin. Uh, we're also looking at um, about five or seven and a half kilometers in out of all solar light street lights in Auchi and um, I think we I can't recall the distance in Ekoma. But those are going to, you know, work is going to, is, is started on them and you'll be seeing um, this uh, lights come up um, in the next few weeks. The river, Benin River Port or Gili Gili Port as some people choose to call it, it's going to be near Benin River Port. Work has started. Uh, we, we've, we are finalizing the appointment of the transaction advisor. We have secured a, an office for them. And um, we are at the federal level, the, the conversations with the Federal Ministry of Finance and uh, for some financing, and that's going well. Uh, and like I said, a lot of work is being done by the middle of next year. It will be clear how the funding will be sourced and when construction will start. We have signed up and started the process of setting up a technology park in Edo State. Signed up an MOU with Decagon. Um, Decagon is a very interesting company that's doing a lot of work in the technology space where they train young men, women to do work, to program because they get the work from, you know, uh, from all over the world. And they have young men and women who they train extensively and rigorously to code and, you know, and, 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 and do the work. They have been successful in Lagos and they've been thinking of where to locate to have a pack, uh, where, you know, where you can have the accommodation, the, 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 the uh, what's it called, um, technology hubs, the, 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 the centers, the, the technical centers where you have, you know, I, I can't remember the word now. Uh, and we were able to convince them, brought them to come attend the, the, my uh, inauguration. And um, they were quite pleased with what they saw on ground, the availability of fiber, the availability of electricity. And we signed on, and as I speak, they're in the process of hiring the first 200 out of the expected 15,000 over the next five years. Um, that should be completed in January. And we already have work for them because, you know, as, as, because we, like I said, we're moving our public service into an electronic platform and we're getting, we've actually contracted that work out to some of these people who are going to be trained. Um, we, well, let me stop for, you know, stop there for now, I've done about 15, uh, 20 minutes, which I expected. If there are more questions, I will take, but um, to, to just close, I want to just, um, inform you that it's, it's difficult. It's a very, very difficult time for the world and also for us in Nigeria. Like we had always said, COVID is unraveling us as a country. All the things we ought to have done that we didn't do, we, it, we, we, you know, we are now, it's now catching up with us. And there will be no quick fixes. There will be, you know, nobody, I, I don't see the capacity in government at the federal level to undertake the changes we want to at the rate and speed we have to. The key is getting all of us, particularly those who are outside of government, to take an interest and see what, how, we, you know, they can bring resources to bear so that we have enough firepower across the spectrum to do what we need to do. There is, there, you know, I mean, I sit down and say, look, guys, this whole attitude of, oh, uh, why can't government, why can't, who is government? Government is all of us. Government does not even have the capacity. We must join government to build the capacity to work for us. 
people don't pay taxes because government doesn't have the capacity, the capacity or credibility to even collect its taxes. We're building that. And if we don't pay taxes, where will we get the money to do the things with the, we, we, that's expected of us? Where will we get the resources to provide security? So in this series of town hall meetings, which we're starting today, I expect that we, we will have an engagement. I will provide leadership. I don't have all the resources. The resources are with you. And in the process of engaging, we will should be able to unlock the resources we required to just move a door forward so that we can make a door great again. Is it going to happen? Yes, it will. Why? Because I have you. On that note, I want to welcome you and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, Governor Gordon of Baseki. Thank you so much, so much. Listening to you, what I see from your face is sincerity, and I'm sure that's what most Edo people see. On that note, I want to call on uh, Moses Obakbolo to take us through, you know, uh, the next phase, uh, to, I mean, to start the next phase with us by, of course, calling out uh, the names we have for the question and answer session. Mozart, please. If he's muted, can we unmute him, please? Yes, I, I will mute myself. Go ahead, sir. Uh, first, I must thank His Excellency, our distinguished and amiable governor, Dr. Knadu. Uh, I, I would like to call him, what is the popular balance now on everybody's lips? The wake and see governor. Uh, after that, very eloquent uh, uh, explanation of what the task is and how you are tackling them. We are very, very convinced that the next four years is going to be four years of bliss. So on that note, first I want to say, Your Excellency, Uwesi, Obulu, Naibia, Mo, Ese, Ukaragbe. As I'm sure I've spoken all the languages of Edu, but we want to say thank you, Your Excellency, for that message of hope. Yes, we have very many people who are waiting, and uh, I'd like to call them. Uh, they are very. It's a long list, especially hands that have been up. We have Austin Iduwoyi, Monday Agawa, Mayor Uchena, Gladys Williams, Morphew Saibovo, Aibekai, Gabriel Igile, Dennis Era, Asemuta Agmola Onusa, Obaya Agmona, Obasui Fred, Osaze, Obaseke Osenegi, Arimi Esoni, Dr. Charles Igbon, Aibu Edefi Evans, Dr. Moses Amadasu, Pastor Sidu Wonyi, Osas Osas, Tifi E. Samson Ezoba, Iya E. Osagi, Darlington Okwewulu. Okay, uh, Moses, sorry, I may have to interject there. I, I yeah. think what I meant was for you to read out the names of the two random, I mean, the two random selected names to ask their questions, actually. And okay. I'm sure if you, if you uh, check the back room, I'm sure the back room have uh, you know, sorted that out. And of course, you have some names that have been sent to you to to read out. Yes. Uh, yeah, one, I, I have a uh, Ide Mudia Ada. That's the first one here. Okay. So can we, can we, can we have Ide Mudia, Mudia Ada, please? And I, I, think, wait, wait, I think, wait. go ahead, Loretta, please. I think Ide Mudia Ada has left the house. I think uh, the person whose hand was up is Dennis Era. Dennis Era. Yeah, I'm here. Do you want to take your question? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I first of all want to appreciate the governor for his um, his mature role in the states and for the past elections and how he was able to handle it. But in terms of security, that's where I want to come in. So many of us in diaspora, I mean the US for instance, and so many of us in diaspora have issues with security. That's why we are afraid for coming around to invest. There are, I have so many friends here who are willing to invest in the state. 
But the insecurity in the state is so much that you are even afraid to come around for visit or anything. You are even afraid to come around and you don't know what is going to happen when you come to the state. And the stories we've been hearing in recent times is so alarming. I learned that um, I, I heard over the news that uh, this morning the uh, somebody was uh, uh, somebody in his cabinet was kidnapped. Those are situations that are so scary for us over here. That's why we are afraid to invest. So I want the governor to throw more light on security in the state. Thank you very much. Before the governor comes on, please we take another name and just combine them so that the governor can respond to two questions together. Please, can we take a, a, another name, please? The other name, the other name whose hands up is um, Sonny Aimee. Akimie, Akimie, Sonny. Please, if we have Sonny Akimie in the house, please, can we unmute him, please? And uh, I want to, I want to please uh, and join everyone to to mute themselves if they are not talking, please. Mm -hmm. So Sonny, you can unmute yourself and, and speak. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so please, I want to first of all appreciate Mr. Governor Obaseki for the work he's doing in Edo State. Then, uh, secondly, let me go straight to the point. So, because that is the reason why I am here. From what he has said before, the issue of security is not the work of the governor alone. It's something we in diaspora more have to support him immensely to uh, make sure. Um, say Uncle Sonny, I'm sorry to interject. Uh, to be very honest, uh, the governor is going to respond to the question. Uh, and okay. you've got 90 seconds to ask your own question. And 30 seconds is, is already gone. Go ahead with your question, sir. Okay. My question is when uh, those state is going to set their security network? When? Because I've seen other states setting their security networks. When a those state is going to implement their security network, that is my major concern in that state. All that, all that thing will fall in place. Thank you. That is my straight question. Thank you very much, sir. Your Excellency, please. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, can I just also suggest, because I'm looking at the chat room also, so, um, so I can, it will, I will be able to take a lot more questions by just responding to the chats that are coming on as I see them while are also taking questions, um, taking questions from, from, from the audience. Uh, back to security. Like I said, let's understand the issue of security. Nobody can secure us better than we can secure ourselves. Security has to be everybody's responsibility. The challenge we have had with security is that even though I am the chief security officer of the state, I have no capacity. I, the police is not under me. They've just promoted my commissioner of police. I don't know who is coming in next. I don't know his training. So even if I said, go and do it, he, then even if he comes, he doesn't have, he's not funded. I have to buy, I mean, patrol vehicles. I have to buy um, patrol for them. I have to, you know, everything is dependent on, on, on on us. But that's not saying giving up. I think we're trying to change that to say, okay, how do we support what we have now? How do we organize ourselves from the streets to the community, to the local government, to the states, and then federal? That's what security should be about. What we've had in the past, it was just federal, down, top down. That has to change, and that is changing, and that's what we are changing that's fundamental. We, and we don't want to, I don't want to follow that path of sloganeering. I'll rather do the work because you will feel security when it's there. Men making names, I mean, uh, creating nomenclatures and, you know, and there's grandstanding does not really provide the security. That I mean, we may not. If security is, is one, the heart of security is intelligence. Being able to gather information, know what's going on, because there's people who perpetrate the crime. So they're not spirits. 
and then having the capacity to respond and respond in a structured, coherent manner. That's what we're building. It's not something you, that you, know, you can just you know, um, sloganeer about and shout about and then you know, just do a few moves and then come down and then it comes back. No, moving forward, what we are building is robust because it's based on the people. There's, because there's nothing that happens that people, somebody has un, does not see or know about. The issue in the past, will the person speak up? Does the person trust that the information he will give will be dealt with confidentially? You know, those are the little things that you don't, you know, you, you, that, that you may not appreciate, you know, once you are the outside, looking in from outside. But I can assure you that with what we have done to date, um, yes, at least we know what's going on and we know what to do. Just with a little bit of resources, you will see, even with the little we have, you will see what we're going to be doing over this holiday period. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. So, so quickly, I've seen a question on abandoned projects, what we're doing, we should finish abandoned projects before we start yeah. new ones. I don't have any abandoned projects in Edo State. That is, what I mean is that there's nothing we've started as a government since I get to, came in four years ago that you know, you can call abandoned. We have visibility of where our projects and we have plans to complete everything we have started. Uh, but we are also in the process of, it doesn't, development doesn't stop creating new ones. Because when we went around the 192 wards during the electioneering, people told us what they needed, what their priorities were. I have all that list. I'm not going to fold my arms and say, okay, I don't start until I finish all the ones that I'm executing today. Um, School of Agriculture, it's another project we have been working on. I was in Igoraki myself uh, last week, uh, Friday, a week today, to see the progress of work. This week, I've had two meetings with the contractors and all the, the professor who is helping us with the accreditation and their teams. So work is going on, and by September, that school will be open. We have support from Ukumu Press School, the private sector, in rebuilding that school. The problem people have is they expect us to do things the way they've always done it. We will not, because it didn't work before. And they say the definition of an insane person is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So all those people who expect that we'll build the schools, the schools the way it used to be, we will not. We want to build schools that would give real jobs, that we want to give, build schools that not, are not for the benefits of the managers of the schools, but for the benefit of the students and, and, and the, uh, the community at large. I saw a post on uh, health insurance and that there was a nepotism in the, the hiring. That is absolutely wrong. I got the text from you, right? And I investigated and it is wrong. And I want to employ us, let us stop this. The fact that you haven't gotten something does not mean that the process was faulted. It was so transparent and I'm prepared to show, I put all the documents in the, you know, in the, sorry, whoever you expected, what well, should get a job there that didn't get it? It's not because the process was manipulated. There was no nepotism. Exams were done, it was transparently done, the right people were shortlisted, and they were selected. So if the person or people you expect to be, to, to be said were not, it doesn't mean that the process was wrong. And the, I've, they've been undergoing training in the last few weeks. I know that I, because I promised January 1 that uh, the, 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 uh, we will start collecting premiums for, for that service. Oja Ramidam, yes, it's one of the things I need to do. It's one of the promises we made. We will need to sit and walk through it. I can't do everything in day one. Cultism is a core part of, yeah, I mean, one of the underlying factors of uh, urban crimes, um, particularly in you know, some parts of the metropolis. And here again, it's all about intelligence. It's all about organizing yourself to respond. We have the laws against cultism, and from what we are doing, we are penetrating those cult groups, and we would we will be able to handle them. Yes, Edo, we, I realize that the Shakiris are part of Edo, by the way, I just got in from uh, Wari, and one of the things I did was an Shakiri event. So we understand that you're part, Edo is very cosmopolitan, we accept, an, uh, you know, we accept everybody, as long as you have something to contribute to Edo, we don't discriminate. I mean, our government will not discriminate whether you're a Joe, you're a Shakiri, you're a Yoruba, you are Igbo speaking, you are, as long as you live in Edo and you're a resident of Edo, I treat everybody the same. Physically challenged people, yes, it's something that I am very, 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 very 
um, uh, interested in. I am working, in fact, two weeks ago, I called the Permanent Secretary for Education to go and meet with somebody who is an expert in uh, education of physically challenged people, and we're putting money. We're, fortunately, we also have some money from UBEC, and we'll add our own money to build the school for uh, disadvantaged uh, people. So let me, I said I did not mention Nupila. I will, uh, I, I, I can't mention everything. I'm going to, yes, the issues in Okwila are within my radar. Um, this season, this holiday season, I'm talking to all, all the, 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 the parties uh, to try and appeal to many of them to move their cases out of court so that we can settle uh, peacefully and get the, 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 the new king um, appointed or, you know, appointed properly. Um, I hear there's uh, activities of disbanded CDA in, this is just Abudu, in some area with elders in the community. I am going to strengthen, I'm actually going through the nomination process for people who will head, you know, the committee on protection of private property. You know, that law says that anybody caught, do, you know, undertaking CDA functions, selling other people's plots, will go to jail for 10 years. I'm strengthening that. I'm going to get a special court. And anybody who, you know, steals other people's land, or government land, will face the law. So let me let's go back to, to, um, to, to, to you. Thank, I, you know, thank I, you, I, Your Excellency. Um, yeah. In the spirit of the chats, because you've really gone into them, there were some that came in just before you, you arrived. And one of them, in the spirit of talking about some disability, is someone asking, Obeya Digia was asking about persons living with albinism in a dose state. Are you doing anything about making sunscreens available to them, either in the local hospitals or proper healthcare facilities? Yes, in the past, we have helped. So you've given them resources for um, creams, for sunscreens, and I haven't received any requests recently, but when I do, I will oblige them. And then Clement Mineki has asked a question more about security, which I think you have tackled. He must have gotten his answer by now. Bright Army Wu is telling us that instead of paying money to India's Lebanese and Chinese, are you looking to explore the Edo diaspora for specialists and professional capabilities? And it's a similar question to Eddie Osage, who has said that in Western nations, chambers of commerce are powerful institutions of business and commerce, and they are used to attract foreign and local investors. How is the Edo State Chamber of Commerce doing? And what is happening and what's functional there? So um, I will let you take these and then we can go back to call some Zoom fans. Yes, we are, um, we are working, well, put it this way, we are a government that just wants value. Whatever I can source locally, I will use locally. And we don't go outside to begin to look for, you know, people to do work if we can find them locally. And, you know, for us, we just want the best. Um, it's not my money, it's the taxpayer's money. So if I'm going to spend it, I should spend it the way I would, to, I would spend my own to try and get value for it. So once we have find people who are local, and by the way, we don't go out, the Chinese, Lebanese people, they come here to look for work and, you know, and when they show their quality, they show us what they can offer, we give to them. At the end of the day, what is important for me is providing services at the right cost. Whether it is a local, I would like locals too, I would like to make sure that my people get the work so that the, most of the money stays back here. And we're doing that um, uh, by, by encouraging even those we give work to, to make sure that they hire locals and train locals to the extent that they can. And uh, 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 so you know, I'm sure for those of you who live abroad, and who, do, who do businesses, you get work, you get contracts, you get work from your accounts, from the boroughs, your county, from the local government, and you may not be original origins from, of, of the place. I'm sure you get the work because they think and they see that you're gonna add value. Chambers of Commerce, yes, we work with them, we cooperate with them, and um, 
we, you know, I spend time at sessions with them uh, and they are involved in the thinking and what we are doing um, at home. Thank you so, very much. Yes. Um, so someone says, Excellency, what are your plans on the new appointments? Like I said, I'm not going to make any appointments until we have tuned the engine of government. Governments must work first. And I want to know, is it, you know, these are new appointments as what? As civil servants, public servants? If so, apply. You want appointments as politic, as a politician, then your, your constituency will throw up your name and we'll decide, we, will, we will look at it. But even as a political appointee, it has to be clear on what you have in government to do, you know, um, and your role so that there are no conflicts. You know, we cannot continue to run the civil service with political appointees. There is a political track and there's a career civil service track. We need to make that separation and deepen it. Um, somebody talked about the museum that, you know, um, uh, about Ari, you, you know, wanted to take your kids to the museum at Ring Road. Unfortunately, the place was a mega bear parlor. Um, yes, what we will, what we, 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 <laughs> what we're going to do is, um, like I said, we're trying to build a new museum um, that's going to be a lot more, uh, you know, what a museum looks like. Um, we just have this penchant for, because there are no outdoors, there are no parks, and wherever people see free space, particularly at this time of the year, they want to, you know, use it. And I think that's how the, the idea issue of using that place as a bear parlor came up. Well, an entertainment thing. We will look at it, um, but I am very careful not to displace people economically. Um, you know, if we're going to, then we're going to create alternatives for them. Um, so in terms of uh, the contractors are returning, like I said, to textile mill roads and second was circular. They have resumed and they started, they started, in work, started work this last week. Uh, we are asked, what is my plan for medical tourism on the healthcare sector? I think that uh, what Edo is a natural hub, but people will pass through. Um, can we bring them in here to get the treatment? Yes. Do we have such plans? Yes, we do. Um, how are we doing it? By, like I said, restructuring, restructuring the healthcare system and getting people to know that healthcare is not equal to hospitals. That is a system that we have the advantage of having over a thousand, almost 2,000 doctors in Edo. Many of them are in federal institutions and private practice and state institutions. When we create a system where all of them can be put to use, they can, you know, it wouldn't really matter because everybody who goes to receive treatment has health insurance, can pay or has the ability to pay. And therefore, the, you know, we, it's clear that the healthcare system can be properly funded. That is what, those are all the things we're doing to make sure that Edo becomes a tourism hub, um, in addition to us having electricity to power our hospitals. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, sir. We'll go back to the Zoom hands that are up as well. I think, um, Uncle Sonny Rabo, you have some people whose hands you say have been up. You are unmuted, sir. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, I have two names. Let me just quickly get the names. Um, first one is uh, Uncle Greg Ogbefu. I think he has something to say, and especially it sounds more like an answer, but maybe it's also a question. Uncle Greg Ogbefu, sir. If you unmute him. Good evening, everybody. Um, I don't uh, have a question. I was uh, invited to make a comment on the proposed uh, port in a state, which His Excellency has as one of his legacy projects. Um, I want to thank the organizers of this program because it's a very uh, apt 
platform for enlightening uh, people, particularly those who are not at home. Um, the port project has been uh, in the radar of past administrations for, for some time, but it has taken His Excellency Governor Basaki to actually take practical steps to bring it into realization. He started by setting up a technical committee, which I was privileged to be part of, to carry out a viability uh, study of building the Genegele port. We, we spent about seven, eight months doing our study and our work. Uh, in the end, some of the summaries was the fact that the port in the original Genegele, as we all know historically, will not be commercially and even technically viable. So it became necessary to relocate the port nearer uh, the Benin River, about 49 nautical miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what we're working on. In terms of accomplishments, the immediate past committee uh, that worked on the project has gotten to a point where they were able to identify the preferred transaction advis uh, advisor. Uh, it's an international company with headquarters in uh, Canada and uh, in consortium with another company in Holland. So we are engaging them now in negotiations and finalization. So by the first week in January, it's expected that um, an agreement will be signed with the transaction advisors whose job is to work with us from inception to actual commissioning. And this is expected to take about 24 to 30 months. Uh, amongst the things they'll be doing with us is to obviously review all the legacy work that has been done by different people in the past, um, come up with an apt design of a port that meets the state's needs. You know, as it is now, uh, those state is landlocked. So the moment we're able to open up the states to the sea and global trade, then the fortunes of our economy definitely is gonna turn around. So we're working very hard to see how we can get this team off as early as possible in the new year. Now, amongst the things they're going to be doing will be to competitively uh, identify the engineering uh, procurement and construction company that will carry out the actual construction. And that is going to be done through a competitive bid. Uh, and more importantly, the transaction advisor also have shown competence and capability and track record of being able to structure the funding as well as source the debt and equity to fund that project with the state contributing a minimal equity. So we are hopeful that with the pace at which we are going, we should be able to get this accomplished uh, in the course of the governor's second term. So Edo should remain very hopeful that the Benin City River Port is gonna be a reality in the course of the governor's term. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. As uh, Uncle Sonny Rabo, do you still have a name to call? I'm sure you do. If it's muted, can uh, can we unmute him, please? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I hope this accident will not keep happening to Sonny Rabo. Um, I have Mr. Israel Wekbe, who is next. Please, you have your 90 seconds. Go ahead. Um, um, Your Excellency, I'm really very, very excited um, to be in this forum. Um, uh, my question is, um, yeah, goes like this. Um, the creative economy is substantially powered by young people, um, but critical to this sector is the need for capacity building to enable the acquisition of skills and competences. Um, I reckon too that there's a correlation between the academia education and practical training. Now, might I ask what your administration's position is in this regard, taking into consideration really the seeming lack of clarity presently. Um, I say this with every sense of um, um, seriousness and responsibility because when we talked about cultism and all of that, 
you know, young persons need to be engaged as it were. So um, in this area of creative economy, education, capacity building and, um, and skills and competencies, what's the administration's position in this regard? Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. It's a very good question. Um, let me just make this general observation that as a government, we have come to the realization that the real issue with us is not the lack of ideas. There's nothing new that has not been said or discussed in the past. What is lacking is the capacity to make, to execute whatever you've decided on, just make it happen. And, and that's the standpoint from which we want to engage, to say, yes, what about this? How can it work? How can you make it happen? And we're saying in doing so, it has to be a mutual responsibility. It cannot be government alone. It's, you know, both the, you know, government is just a catalyst. We'll create the enabling environment to make it happen. The thinking and perhaps the, 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 the initial plan work. That's, that's our role. In the area of the creative in of creatives, it's one area we know has first is innate. It's just natural to us. It's natural to Edo people are very, very innovative and creative people. So for us as government, how do we support? It's to create the enabling environment for people to be able to do what they, you know, what they, they know how to do best, but in a creative space. What do you need? You need, like you say, capacity building. So we work, we're working with the, the, the German government, the GIZ, who just gave, I think, about in excess of uh, half a million dollars, and we had to match it with our own funds. And the old the observer uh, premises, as we speak, I just connected it to Osiomo Power. Um, and we, just like we have in the production hub, we're creating, we're, 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 we're building an, you know, a, a hub for the innovatives. So you have 24 seven electricity, you have spaces where people can come in with their uh, finishing equipments, you know, to finish music, whether it's the films, whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that premises is being made ready as we speak. I went to inspect it about two weeks ago, and I hope that before the end of the first quarter next year, you will have studios, you will have um, cameras, you will have mixers, you have all the things that you need to finish. And hopefully classes will be run and um, you know, things uh, um, and um, instructions will be given and training will be given to people who are already in that industry or aspiring to be. Um, I like the idea of a business Zoom meeting. And I think it's something, Lamte, we should put together so that, you know, yes, beyond these sort of general meetings, we want to sit and I say, look, I, these are the opportunities I'm looking for investment in in this area is very, very specific, in the healthcare area, and we want to partner with people to build new mortuaries. I want to do this. This is the cash flow we expect. You know, I want to be able to do specific, you know, transactional meetings via Zoom. And I hope we can organize this maybe quarterly. Somebody asked about the plans for children. I think for us as a government, it's all about, the, you know, about them, the next generation. And that's why we're investing so much in education. I mean, the biggest gifts you can give to a child, the greatest gift is education, very good quality education. And we're investing in our school systems. I want to use this opportunity to thank the chairman of SUBEB, one of you, um, John of Yahweh, the amount of work that they're doing for these children is just um, unbelievable. God will continue to reward you. So the person who has been asking me to talk about the plans, every, it's about them, it's about their healthcare, it's about health, it's about their you know, training, it's about their protection. Um, uh, uh, so that's, that's you know. um, a lot of people have put questions about roads. You know, um, what I want to tell you is that I went through all the 192 wards in Edo State. So there is no community, there's no local government, no community in a ward. I do not know what the road, road request is. I have them. It's a pile. So we will not be able to deal with all of them, but the important thing is to plan for them. Deal with the ones you can deal with now and have a plan for those you are not able to cover. 
Uh, so, so, so what we've done is we, we're, we've just fin finished the process of hiring a team, an international team, to come and help us with our regional and urban plan. That is what I am concluding now. And that is another legacy we must leave for Edo. We will not be able to build all the roads. However, we should be able to tell you when your road will be built, given the resources we, we have, we, we expect to earn, and, you know, uh, uh, and the priorities that we have as a state. So I've, you know, I've heard all of you. Um, I've seen all your requests. Um, and um, I want to tell you they are in, but we're putting them in a planning process. We're going to put the plan design them, and then see how we can fund them. Um, but realistically, we will not be able to fund all our roads in a four-year time frame. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Um, I, I've got two persons here, uh, Sele Okogo and uh, Roland Omorodion. They have questions. Please, can we unmute them? Sele Okogo should go first, Sele or Kelly. Can we unmute them if they're in the house? Then can we unmute Roland or Morodion, please? If uh, Mr. Okogu is not there. Roland or Morodion, I'm trying to unmute. I can find both. Roland. I think he's probably left Roland the house. And, uh, Kelly. He's okay, exactly, and Kelly as well. Okay, I can move find on to the next now. ones. Long okay, time please. Uh, can we find uh, Alexander uh, Edionwe, please? Mm -hmm. Alexander Edionwe and Gladys Alexander Williams. Alexander Please. Okay, Alexander Edionwe uh, can unmute himself. I think I've just asked him to unmute. He can go ahead. Alex, please. Try to unmute yourself. Speak. Thank you. Yeah, I can't Thank you. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I really don't have uh, any question, but uh, I would like to introduce myself so you know the angle I'm coming from, Your Excellency. Uh, my name is Professor Alexander A. Dionwe. I'm the President and CEO of Alpha International Group LSC here in the US, and also we have uh, uh, Alpani Global Concept Company registered in Nigeria. Uh, my, our area is we are into uh, food production and we are ready to assist and contribute our quota in developing agriculture and agribusiness in uh, Edusit and also generating jobs. With the time I have, what I really am interested in is, is this, is my intention to seek your audience in terms of strategizing uh, how we can customize or uh, tailor agri and agribusiness revitalization initiative that we have for Edo and in Edo states, which we also intend to use as templates to uh, use in other parts of, of Nigeria. I will go in detail with this, I mean, in this area, later on if we are able to connect. Also to let you know that we are already present in- I will have to interject here, sir. Uh, with all due respect, I think uh, the points you've made, they are very salient points. And uh, I want to assure you that uh, we will follow up with you. And uh, you heard the excellence, uh, his excellence said earlier, that you will look forward to a time where we shall hold uh, a business Zoom meeting. I'm sure the points you are raising right now will be very relevant at that point. And uh, because of what we are doing right now, which we need to fulfill, as it were, I will uh, want to move to the next uh, person to ask his question. Uh, is our question. Of course, I equally have here Gladys William. Please, can we unmute Gladys, Gladys William? And then uh, we will she follow up on, uh, you know, uh, Alexander Dionway. Gladys, you can speak. You can unmute yourself, Gladys. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's be reminded that you have just 90 seconds. Sure. Good evening, everyone. I will say I'm very pleased to be among every one of you here. 
And um, thank you, SLSC, for having me here and for having you here too. Your SLSC, I don't have much to say. I just want to say thank you for your acknowledged letter that you sent to every one of us and those who have received and those who have yet not to receive, we all say thank you. We were overwhelmed to receive such letter from you. It make us feel blessed. It make us, to, it make us um, have more confidence, have more courage to support you more and more and more. And uh, I want to also say thank you for the ongoing project in Endo State and the one on Jet to do. May God Almighty continue to lead you and strengthen you in good health and wisdom. That is all I have to say, your SLS. And congratulations okay. once again. We day here for you, no shaking. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I want to quickly uh, call on uh, Dr. Loretta Alboko to quickly um, call the next uh, group of names to ask their questions, please. Dr. Loretta. We have with who his hands have been up. Festus, look by we. Festus, can he be unmuted, please? Festus, he can unmute himself. Festus, look by we, please. Unlucky Asen Ogwan, please get ready. Your hand has been up. Excellency. Uh, First of you're unmuted. Can you please go on? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm ready Why to... Lucky Asen Ogwan gets ready? Good evening, Your Excellency. Uh, I want to use this opportunity once again to congratulate you for your re-election. Uh, my name is uh, Festus Ubewi. I am the convener of Togba movement in Germany. Uh, actually, most of my questions have been answered already by you. And uh, that name that was given to you, Wake and See Governor, is actually playing out. Thank you very much. Uh, we do expect a lot from you. Uh, and we are believing as well that you will deliver. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Festus. Um, Asen Ogwan, are we ready with you? Yeah, yes, I'm ready. Good, 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 good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucky Asen Ogwan. I congratulate you, my NCLC governor. Uh, my question today is that uh, you have already raised the point that uh, all things are passed away. I would like to ask those markets that was born, if you award it, are they going to put a provision of fire service? Like even, even though it's not a vehicle, as in they have to put the fire extinguisher on the market and on, on the police station too, are those provisions is going to be made for the re 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 rebuild of the, of the, of the, the bond market and the bond police station? That is my question. Excellent. And we have, thank you very much, sir. We have Joseph Ogieho. Can he please take his question in 90 seconds, please? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, His Excellency Governor Norega Opaseki. Thank you for finding time to come to us this evening. I'll go straight to my question. Uh, I was a security officer and I live here in London and I want to come in in terms of the security uh, situation in Edo State. Just as you have rightly said, you as a governor cannot do everything and you need the help of us in diaspora. So I want to come in in terms of security because the way I see the security in Edo State is not working the way it should be. If you will permit me to share my expertise with you or to help build the security apparatus in Edo State, I think I will be very, I will be, be very happy and I will be glad to join you. This is my license. So to prove to you that I am a security officer. So it's being renewed every year, but I stopped renewing it because I'm not using it. So if you want me to come uh, if you want to want me to share my expertise with you, because the way I, mean, I come home every year, twice a year, but I stop coming because the security is not working. So I really, if you want it to work and I'm willing to support you and I'm willing to help you to make it work. 
So Thank those you, in, sir. So those in diaspora can be happy to come home. Thank you, sir. I think at those all across the world are just like you wanting to key in. So before His Excellency takes this, I'll just add on two chats. One is a very practical one. Um, at those dynasty worldwide, they are saying they sent a representative to this um, college of, um, so the college, technical college yesterday, and that they were told that the places people get to do their practicals, it's outside of the technical college. So I don't they are still worldwide wants to know why this is happening. And they are also asking what is happening at Egualo. There's supposed to be a technical college there because they believe that upgrading the technical schools is the key to a better and vibrant economy. Then someone is saying, sir, that in order for the government to save money, he saw you at the school of nothing and he saw you wanting to revamp the place, which is a very good idea. But he's saying that once you revamp the place and you build the hostels, can you please charge the students a fair amount, if not too much, but something so that at least the government can make some money back to put into some other things still within the nursing school. And this is Nosa Obano from the US. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for all the great questions you've asked. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer, so I'll just attempt to answer all the questions as briefly as I can. I want to start by ex once again extending my profound appreciation to all of you who've come out to support our administration. Many of you on your own cost flew in to attend the inauguration ceremony ceremonies, we really do appreciate and thank you immensely. Uh, we had to keep the ceremonies low key because of what is going on of, you know, with security and COVID-19. Um, so, you know, so we apologize that we couldn't have the kind of big splash that people thought was uh, required. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to, you know, put it on record that all of you, I mean, all of you without exception, um, just we're, were just um, unbelievable in terms of your response, your prayers, your good wishes, the goodwill. Just that's the energy, that's the oxygen we need to keep us going. And we will, we will, with God on our side, continue to do our best uh, for our people. Um, we some, uh, let me just talk about teachers. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do a mix between the questions asked and you know the ones I'm seeing in the chat room. Teachers, yes, we are currently hiring teachers. Um, but when we, we call it the uh, a fellowship, the teacher fellowship. So we're hiring teachers uh, which, who will train for three years before absorbing them into the adjusted civil service. And what we're doing is we're hiring them in their locations because we noticed that um, we, we've been having problems with posting teachers. You find some areas where you have excess teachers and many areas you have very, you know, you don't have enough. So what we've done is we've gone through the, you know, the, 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 the um, we've gone through to see where the distribution of teachers, and we down started this project where we will be hiring up to three thousand teachers, but we will be hiring them in their communities, and not, yeah, and in particularly where there is shortage. And uh, we're battling, you know, to make sure that people do the right things. Yes, you don't have a job, you're in Benin, you want to teach because you are from a particular community. I'm not going to employ you in Benin, except you are in that community and the community leaders endorse and tell us that you really live there. We will not employ you, uh, you know, as a teacher. Uh, so we're employing teachers and uh, the process is on and hopefully by the beginning of February, you know, we'll announce and we'll begin to uh, pay them. And for agriculture, we have done a lot in agri. So I thank uh, the young man who talked about his, um, you know, his intent interests. For, interestingly, we have some some Americans. I mean, uh, uh, people who are in the diaspora who live, uh, you know, this ones in this who are currently farming and partnering with us in the agricultural uh, projects we are currently undertaking in, in Edo. I have at least five of them, and they come in and out, and some of them are doing well. Uh, and so we just encourage you to join. We, we don't want to talk anymore about these things. We just want to do it. You know, if you're ready to come and take the risks, get on a plane, come here, we'll show you the opportunities. And we'll, our role is to try and reduce the risk for you. 
Our government is not a farmer and cannot be a good farmer. So we're not even going to, but we'll create an enabling, enabling environment for you to farm. Um, yes, we are looking at crops. The crops will have a competitive advantage in like oil palm, cassava, rice. By the way, most of the rice we are consuming this Christmas in Edo State, I mean, at least with government buying, we're all grown in Edo this season. Um, so I'm happy to tell you that we have Edo rice. We would have had more, but for the flooding around, uh, uh, flooding of some of the farms. But we're going back to encourage people to grow rice this uh, dry season. Um, you talked about um, uh, the technical schools uh, and the placement of students in technical schools. In fact, we, we, it's, you know, we're, we're going through an exercise now where we are trying to geolocate not everybody who's, I mean, everybody who has a technical business. The children need to be apprenticed. You can't do everything theoretical in class. So that's why we look, if you, uh, you know, you are into um, welding, for instance, fabrication. After you've taken a few classes and been trained, we'll send you outside to a welder shop or a fabrication yard to go and work. We can't keep you in school um, to, you know, and just to give you the theory, theory, theory. It, that's why it's, it's technical. We want to produce people for the markets. Um, uh, uh, and so that's, that's what's happening. That's why you didn't see those kids. They're all been placed. We'll continue to look for people who can absorb them, whether it's in the technical school, school of a Greek, you know, school of education. We want, we want to prepare people for work I mean, from, you know, from a very practical standpoint. We're more interested in the outcomes and not in the motions. Yes, we're, for the buckets, we're rebuilding. We're putting hydrants. I mean, in fact, we've told even for the existing ones, we're working with the market associations to make sure that they have boreholes, they have water, they have hydrants. Um, and train the, the security, the people who manage the markets to be able to respond when there is fire. But you recall that diesel fires were just not normal accidental fires. They were really arson by you know who, the lions and the tigers. Um, <clears throat> but thank God they have been, we've tamed them and we hope that we won't have any more such fires. And when we do, uh, we're building capacity to respond. Um, lastly, um, someone talked about um, expertise um, and water in Eastern land. Well, we, for water, I'm just too happy to announce to you that the Water Works in Niboha has started working. Reticulation to Urumi is, you know, ongoing. The meters are being yeah, given out and water um, has started flowing in the taps in some areas. We will continue to expand. The biggest issue we have with water is electricity. You know, because if you have to use diesel generators to pump at those water stations, then the costs of delivering the water will be very high. Um, so we're looking at uh, alternative options to try and reduce the cost of um, pumping water from the pumping stations. Um, I am sure that I have attempted to answer as many questions as possible. If I haven't answered, um, I, it's, you are well, because I mean, it's not humanly possible to do answer every, uh, all of them. But I think the key message is to leave behind that first. As a government, we just want to do. I have less than four years left to complete my term. So we, I don't have the patience and time to be debating and discussing options. The time we have is how to execute the, on the options we have already decided on. We will not be able to do everything we have, but what we will do, we will leave a plan for the next 30 years on how to do most things. Uh, the ones that we can do now, we will, and hopefully we'll start a tradition. We'll be on a trajectory where Subsequent people, governors, subsequent administrations have a roadmap. And also we have a system to check them, to force them to work for us. I think what you have done is um, that you have made history. You have turned the, you know, you've turned the corner. You do. After the elections of September 19th, it will be very difficult to have another governor or set of governors who can, who will just do what they like in government house and not feel a sense of accountability to the people. 
because they got in there by the contributions or support of a few people does not mean they will go in there and work for just a small clique of people. Every, I mean, look at the number of people who voted for me to become governor. I owe it to them and many more who didn't vote. I, my a victory and success has been made possible by the majority of people of Edo State. So we must work for the majority of people of Edo State. So if you haven't gotten, I mean, don't feel bad. It's not personal. It's not, you know, we should, for me, we, this is, we sold the idea that we're going to work for our people. We did, we're not going to work for individuals. So I've had the bashing from family, from friends that I haven't helped, but it's, it's part of it. Look at, I mean, the oath I swore to, my oath didn't say I must take care of my friends and my family first before taking care of the people of Edo State. By taking care of the people of Edo State, my family and friends will benefit. And that's what it should be. And I want to thank you very much for your continued support. And to, I just assure you that the goodwill, the good wishes, the prayers from you is the oxygen that just keeps us going. And just please don't relent. Keep praying for us. Keep advising us, you know, keep supporting us. And by the grace of God, we will make it do great again. I want to wish all of you Merry, Merry Christmas and a better 20, 2021. 2020 was awful. As the Queen said, it was Annus Horribilis. We pray that God Almighty will make 2021 that year of renewal, that year of revival, and that we will have learned the message he sent to us in 2020, that we can and should make his world a better place. Once again, Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Before you go, I think Uncle Sonny wants to bring someone in to also thank you from the angle of your people. So Uncle Sonny, are you there, please? Yes. Please, can we unmute him, please? Yes, he's unmuted. Uncle Sonny, you have a please. Your Excellency, sir, uh, allow me to invite Ambassador Becky Waifu, all the way from Tanzania, who will give the vote of thanks. He's been watching and listening carefully. Ambassador Waifu, please. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Ambassador Matthew Biki Waifo from Tanzania. I want to, first of all, very wholeheartedly thank you, Your Excellency, for this kind of community engagement with all people of Edo State and friends of Edo State, including those that didn't vote for you. The fact that you have taken time to address everybody from the low, the good, the bad, and the ugly, this trait in you is what make all of us say that you are the governor of all of us. We are all in this uh, first series of town hall meetings interacting on how to move our state forward together. You are the first governor in Nigeria to have blazed this, tail, uh, this trail. Please, sir, keep it up. I also want to thank all Edolites at home and abroad who are here today participating in this meeting, making a sacrifice of their time, love, and resources it is a clear indication of how much interest we all have in the continued good governance of our state. The governor has addressed key issues in his talk today, and persons have asked uh, areas of call, uh, addressed areas of core concerns. We have brainstormed together for close to over two hours now. It is clear we have a rebirth in Edo State. There is a new order, which is the envy of other states in Nigeria, 
And in fact, the African continent, I can clearly confirm that to you, sir. However, I want to use this medium to reassure all of us that the court cases are warranted storms in teacups initiated to cause, to cause distractions to positive governors and the type of rebirth which Edo State require right now and has never had before. So let us all not fall into the trap of losing the mega vision. We must stick together to help this government. The governor cannot do it alone. That is very clear because of the gargantuan task in front of him. This is the time for men and women of goodwill in Edo State to stand up and think of what they can do for Edo State not what a do state can do for them. And it is also time, like the governor just pointed out, to know that, please, this is not time for over bloated sense of entitlement. Let us work with genuine love for our state. If along the way you are remembered, fine. If along the way others are remembered, please let us not stop the support because we cannot all be commissioners. We cannot all be spokesmen for the government. We cannot all be directors. Finally, I just want to say that I enjoin all Edo lives and friends of Edo State to be on the lookout so that together we can all defend the mandate we have given to Governor Godwin Nogegase or Baseki for a second term. We will not stand aside and watch compromised <laughs> judicial officers truncate the collective will of the Edo people. Together, we will defend our mandate. And I want to say yes, sir. And to all Edo lights everywhere, we are quite aware that certain people have said they have the judiciary in their pocket. And having dealings with judiciary every day, I know that this is there. So I'm calling on all Edo lights. Please let us defend the mandate we have given to the governor. Let us make sure that as we stood as one during the elections, we continue. We should not be weary until we achieve our purpose, which is to take a do state to the next level. Thank you all for being participants here. And thank you, Your Excellency, for giving us the honor to host you. And I wish to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, Your Excellency, please tell our First Lady, Merry Christmas. God bless everyone on this platform today and those that could not be here. God bless Edo State. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very, very much. Man, thank, thank you so you. much, Your Excellency. Thank you, His Excellency Ambassador Matthew Biki Uwaifo. That was very powerful. Uh, before we leave, uh, it is my honor to equally uh, thank every member of this team uh, for all they've been doing. Of course, uh, there are Others we don't readily see, but they are behind the scene doing a lot to make everything possible. Of course, uh, Dr. Johnson Odibo, we thank you very much. We thank you so much. Uh, Isoke Ibie, Ambassador of thank Culture you. to, I mean, to Alpha State to Canada, thank you so much. We equally thank uh, uh, the Archbishop of Activism, Newton Igbinegun. May God bless you for all that you've been doing. Uh, of course, our sister, Dr. Loretta Oboroko, wonderful leader. May God bless you. Thank you so much, Moses Obakbolo, for all you've done. Thank you so much, uh, Uncle Sonny Irabo. God bless you so much, so much, so much. And so many others who have been working with this team. On that note, uh, I just want to play the Edo State Anthem to close the day. Before you go, please don't forget COVID is real. 
and take all precautions so that you are safe. Thank you, sir. We shall follow up on that. Thank you so much. The ancient city is calling. Oh, arise, sons and daughters of the land. The king of the city is marching. Stand up high to the pride of the land. The founding fathers have labored and our time to service now. The glory of the new head of nation will forever be our pride. Beautiful head of glorious head of you're the heart. Of Nigeria, beautiful and of glorious and of stars are singing over you. You're the land people dream to be. Our treasures are found in all nations, and our greatness is second to none. Our history forever shall be written How our kings have endured all times A people cultured in unity Our hearts beat for the land Rich culture, stories of heroes Legacy is forever be Beautiful and of Stand come what may And the future lies in us Teach our children to teach their children What our fathers, fathers taught To fear and love the Creator Only then shall we Thank you very much. COVID is real. <laughs> okay.